This video will discuss second order reactions in chemical kinetics. So taking a look at our uh, prototypical reaction here, reactants A and B, products C and D, each of them having a stoichiometric coefficient, nu A, nu B, nu C, nu D. We have our reaction rate, which we're going to assume here uh, is, obeys the following rate law. It equals the rate constant K times the concentration of A squared. So the reaction rate is also defined as being equal to minus 1 over the stoichiometric coefficient of A times the derivative of A with respect to T. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to assume for simplicity that this stoichiometric coefficient just equals 1 so that we don't have to tag it along for everything, but uh, we're just going to derive things uh, without that extra complication. So what we have here is Ka squared equals minus dA dt. So the derivative of something with respect to time is a negative constant times the same thing squared. So minus dA, if we multiply both sides by dt, minus dA equals k times a squared times dt. If we then divide both sides by a squared, we have dA over a squared equals minus k dt. If we then integrate both sides, as we've separated all the a dependence over here and the t dependence over here, we'll integrate from t prime equals 0 to t prime equals t. When t prime equals 0, a equals a naught. When t prime equals t, a equals a of t. So we'll integrate from a naught to a of t of dA over a squared, and we'll integrate from 0 to t of minus k dt. All right, so the integral of 1 over x squared with respect to x is minus 1 over x. So this is 1 over a, evaluated at a t and a naught. So this is 1 over a t, final, minus 1 over a naught, the initial, equals, and then I've already switched the signs here because I've switched the minus sign there, equals the integral of minus k dt is minus kt, but I multiplied by both sides to cancel out the minus sign that comes out when you do this integral. So 1 over at minus 1 over a naught equals kt, or our concentration of our reactant A with respect to time, or our concentration over time, is equal to 1 over, so I have this entire quantity to the minus 1, 1 over 1 over a naught plus kt. So this is our integrated rate law for second order reactions. It tells us how the concentration of a reactant or product varies over time for a second order reaction. So if I look at A of t, if I plot these starting at some initial concentration A naught, uh, the A gets consumed, its concentration goes down over time. But for second order reactions, it, the rate depends on the, on the concentration squared. So it starts initially going down quickly, but then the rate at which it goes down gets slower and slower, and as the concentration goes down, that decay gets much slower as time goes. So if we have a fast rate constant, it occurs much more quickly. The lower rate constant means the same decay, but on a slower time scale, and as the rate gets slower, it's slower and slower in that decay still. Um, we see from this equation here, that if I plot 1 over a of t, that's equal to kt plus 1 over a naught, and this is a linear equation. If I plot the inverse of the concentration versus time for a second order reaction, I'll get a straight line. If I plot 1 over a of t, it starts out at 1 over a naught, and then over time, it's going 1 over a of t is going to increase linearly depending on my rate constant. So if I do my reaction and I measure the concentration at a series of times, then I plot 1 over those concentrations versus time, and I get a straight line, that implies that I have a second order reaction in that particular reactant. And the slope of that 1 over concentration versus time is equal to the rate constant of the reaction. So I can not only tell that my reaction is second order, I can actually infer the rate constant from a plot of 1 over a versus t. All right, so this is our rate law for the second order reaction, or sorry, uh, integrated rate law for the second order reaction. 
looking at our second order dependence in the rate law versus our derivative of the concentration. We're able to separate variables, integrate, and get an expression for how our concentration of our species changes over time.